you know, they just filled out petitions and, and uh, they wanted things back the way they were. Keep you part of Tommaso Hall. Oh, exactly. The fixture that I you are. I bleed Tommaso Blue. <laughs> It's a little known fact, though, that before you were the dean of detergents at Babson, you had a little, a different job. Yeah, I was a grave digger. How the hell do I talk about this? But I mean, uh, For a long time. Uh, Fifteen years. Yeah. I threw dirt in a lot of people. <laughs> it was enjoyable. <laughs> Very enjoyable. <laughs> All right. But I mean, any you know, strange stories or stuff that happened? Uh, a good lot. I could, I could stay here all night and tell you strange stories. I mean, it's <laughs> just. Uh, but if I had to pick a favorite, it was one we were talking about the other day. The dog running off with the guy's leg bone. <laughs> uh, so you're like, and I, had to, I had to chase him maybe about a quarter of a mile, and the dog had a bone in his mouth, and I just had to chase after him. Well, and the worst, this dog used to wait for me every day. He was not my dog, but I mean, he basically was. And for like 13 years, this dog, he'd just see my VW bug pull up, and he'd just be with me for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a habit of digging into the piles. <laughs> and we had, you know, every now and then, if you're digging a grave, and if you lay the grave out wrong, right. a foot e or two either way, you go to dig, you crunch, and you dig up a, the box. <laughs> so what happens if you get the bones, you put them in the pile, and when you fill in the grave the next day, you put the bones in first and just make sure they're down pat. Yeah, that's part so of the job. This dog, he, that day, he just walked up to the pile, and he just started sniffing away, and he started digging away. Next thing I know, the head was in there. Pulls his head out and he's got a leg bone about that big. That's the job. <laughs> and the worst thing you can do to a dog when you want to get him is to run after him. Because mm -hmm. you run after him, he's going to run 10 feet, then right. he's going to stop and then play. And, then, and I did that for a good half mile. <laughs> That's job experience. That's it on the certainly resume. was. I tell you, one of the, I like your article in the Free Press. It's just one of the best. So. But your, my favorite part was this recent article about this, this guy in Tommaso. You know, what's his name? Are you referring to the Mad Crapper? The Mad Crapper. The Mad Crapper. What's this guy's story? He, I have doing? no idea who he is, what he is, or whatever. The only reason I, I figure that he's human is because, like I said before, I haven't found any hoof prints on the wet carpet. <laughs> uh, what does he do? What does the guy uh, do? How do you want me to put it? Well, B is nice. It's a G-rated audience. I was going to say, it's a, well, he uh, clogs toilets. That's the way to put it. <laughs> and, <laughs> he <leaves. laughs> and, he, and he just does it when he's on his, really on his game two or three times a day. And I have no idea who this guy <laughs> is. And I've written about him in the paper, and I'd love to find him. And I, as I put it this week, I'd like someone to be a school teacher. I hope someday you do. Skip, thank you so much for all coming right, out sir. for us. Educating us all. We're going to Skip Connolly, everybody. Peter, I stay here now, right? We'll, we'll, we'll be back in a second, everybody. Hey, everybody, we're back. You know, we're all proud to have a professional like Professor Hobbs at our school. She has recently won the coveted Cable Ace Award for Excellence in Media Education. Her program, No TV, is truly a masterpiece. It's right here for you. Everybody, let's check out one clip of her No TV program. November 1988, a man we'll call Luis. I want my students to understand that every image, every sound that they see on television represents a choice by a filmmaker. You can see that it's kind of washed out. The picture is faded and it makes you think that it's actual footage of what really happened. And they're trying to interweave them to make it look like the, the actor pilot is the real pilot. We cannot be sure. Once we start depending on the media for our knowledge, what is real and what is not. The no TV materials give teachers the tools they need to integrate media literacy concepts into their classes. How did the filmmaker's purpose shape the content? Who makes money from this program? How is language used in this tape? As a teacher, what we want is we want them to evaluate it and we want them to draw their own conclusions. And that's what media literacy is all about. Everybody, Professor Renee Hobbs. How are you? Nice to see you. Have a seat, please. Well, it's obvious what we're going to talk about. I mean, Cable Ace, it's a big deal. I'm sure you know it by now. Tell us a little about that. Well, it was pretty exciting at um, the award ceremony at the, in Wilshire, at Wilshire Boulevard. They, they, gave, they gave us a limousine. We pull up. We get out. There's cameramen all over. There's like a red carpet. Wow. They take one look at us, and they go, no, nah, no, nah, <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. We don't need to take pictures of that. Where's the stars? So it was very exciting. The, my, my big experience being on stage was standing behind the president of the Discovery Channel and the president of Time Warner as they collected the award. These are two guys who knew nothing about the project at all. Okay, nothing. 
right. They had nothing to do with it. It was their money. Because it's a business specialty there you school. Go. That's why. Blame it on that. <laughs> One of the most exciting part of this is getting to meet, I think you meet the president, didn't you? Uh huh. I did get to meet Mr. Bill Clinton, but that was for a different project. That oh. was for the um, media violence project that I did for the uh, National Cable Television Association. Fantastic. So it was pretty cool. It was very exciting to meet President Clinton because you knew you were getting close to him the more um, security guards. Mm -hmm. And the guys with the little uh, right. things in their ears. Like once you started to get surrounded by them, you knew you were getting close to them. Mm -hmm. So I had this great, I had this all planned. Everybody I was talking to in the, you know, you, you're like in line with a bunch of other people. Uh -huh. They, um, I, I was saying like, oh, I'm so nervous. I'm going to meet the President of the United States. This is unbelievable. They were going, I've done this five times. I've done this ten times. No big deal, no big deal. So I get down there. I've got my whole speech planned. I'm going to say, Mr. President, I'm representing the media literacy movement, and I'm so grateful for your support. Did you get to shake his hand, actually? Anyway, so they give me this card, and it says my name on it, right? And so I hand it to this guy, and this guy speaks it out in front of the microphone. He goes, Dr. Renee Hobbs. And then I go right up to him, and he, he like, almost hugged me. Whoa. I shook his hand. He so said, he looked me right in the eye, and he said, and he like, he shook my hand, and he like held my arm like so he this. Tried to, so he tried to hit on her. It's obvious. I was just about to ask, did he hit on you? Said, yeah. And he said, welcome to the White House. And I went, uh, 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 And I just, I don't remember anything. I didn't say anything. I didn't say thank you. I didn't say Mr. President. I didn't say Bill. I didn't say anything. I just, uh. Were his hands greasy from the French fries or any yeah. sort of salty residue there? But you know what? I tried to linger afterwards. Like I was like so freaked out I couldn't remember anything. And I, I felt like I was floating. It was like an out-of-body experience. Jeez. And I, I, I was floating around. and Bill's like, had those a lot, I heard. <laughs> and I couldn't think of anything. I couldn't think of anything except I, I didn't want to leave. I was like, it was like... It was like kind of being high, you know? It was like, whoa. What does that feel like, Professor it Hobbs? Now it's the kids' show. Stop anyway, now. So pretty soon, pretty soon, the Secret Service guys start to come over to me and like, move along, move along. <laughs> it's like you can't linger. You too had close. your fun. Go right. another quarter and make right. it go. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Hobbs, it's been a it pleasure awesome. having you. Absolute honor having you at the school. Thank you so much for coming, <laughs> Professor Renee Hobbs. Everybody, we'll be right back. <laughs> My next guest has two interesting features about him. He's a Babson alum, and he's a drummer. He's also a member of our own Good Life Band. Everybody give a warm welcome for Butchie. Hey, Butchie, how are you? Good to see you there. Hey, hold on. I tell you, hey, Butchie, first thing we've got to talk right off the bat. How does a Babson alum become a drummer? <laughs> I tried the violin. No matter, how, no, no matter how hard I hit with the sticks, it sounded awful. Right. Yeah, so the drums did seem like the next time. So. <laughs> no choice left. I am an idiot. <laughs> anyway, on the last program, last big program, yeah. Van Winkle, you know, your drummer, I mean, your guitar player in the band, Jinx, yeah. he was talking a little garbage took about it, you. He took a shot. Yeah. A couple shots at you. Yep. So I figured, you know, just to be fair, you know, none of this will hold up in court, but we just bring you out and you could just, you know, go back at him a little bit and maybe we can create an open forum here for some yeah, debate. I'm, I'm glad you gave me the chance to, you know, sort of refute it because, uh, <laughs> oh, I mean, I used to, you know, debate at the state level in high oh, school. Yeah, and absolutely. Not. Yeah, I was on the all-mass debating team. <laughs> oh, no. no, no. <laughs> practice, <laughs> practice, practice, <laughs> practice. Practice. <laughs> Believe me, I'm a skilled artist. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the clip, everybody. Let's check out Jinx. Especially freshman year, I remember, uh, not so much me, but the uh, drummer in the band was famous for breaking things. He was uh, usually get drunk and uh, either break. I remember one time he broke a sink. I remember he, uh, <laughs> I, I, should, I shouldn't tell a story, but he had one time when he, uh, he mistakenly pissed on his alarm clock. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how we're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Huh? That's tough. Here's our famous jinx. All right, Butchie. First, first of all, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a mistake each of the three times that it happened. It was three. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I'm out of the habit. I'm older, 
just matured. You know, I well, I use call wake up wake up calls now. Right. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the alarm clock alarm clock thing is gone. But if you come to my house, uh, don't borrow the phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, this has got to go. We're taking notes. Someone taking notes. Yeah, this is important. Okay. Everyone keep this. Write this down. Now, there's some things that you need to know. Okay. So one night we're freshmen and we're sitting in the hall. You know, buddy, you're having a pizza. It's quiet. It's like two o'clock in the morning. It's a Friday night, and. Uh, all of a sudden, the door at the end of the hall bursts open, and out he comes running. Okay, now mind you, um, he's drunk, and he's sitting there like this, holding over his mouth, you know, and he's running towards the bathroom. He, he's buck naked. Okay, <laughs> I mean, he's, and he and he's like 280, 200. He was 100 pounds heavier in college. Oh. So I mean, this was not not what you want to see. Right. And uh, <laughs> now, now me and my friend are actually concerned at this point, so we we grab the pizza and go upstairs because we thought he wanted to slice. And he goes run he goes running into the bathroom, and that's the last we see of him. And the next morning. I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I, I only really remember two things. Okay. okay? No, number one, and in, in fairness to him, he does deny this to this day, but there was a really sort of nasty, unpleasant surprise left on the radiator in the john. Well, what's number two? What's that? What's number two? That's what was on the radiator. <laughs> oh! I didn't say it was this, pleasant. No, no. This show stooped to I lower know. and lower <laughs> levels. Yeah, I wanted to tell the story. Every time we've gone from kitty to adult to the baby. dumb. Debating. The ba well, yeah. <laughs> we tried. Yeah. But I hear uh, recently you played a couple of big gigs, which is really exciting. Yep, we've done all the big ones, uh, sort of. <laughs> the, that's Robin. Yeah, that's, we that's broke a, a bit of sarcasm. We've broken more patent violations in one hour than no, I think oh, any we're, other we're show. We're not done yet. Oh, okay. no, we did, yeah, we did Mama Kid, and we're going to be doing The Rat in Kenmore Square in about a month. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is it a month or something? No, it's May. <laughs> yeah, fourth or fifth. Well, <laughs> there's plenty of information. Why are you going to your adversary for advice? I don't, know. I don't know. And another thing, now, this is a whole shame sort of classic. I, I don't know what's worse. There was a time, where, again, when he was a freshman, I guess it was to scare up some dating. He, uh, he used to troll the, what, what's the Babson Foreign student thing called here? Uh, 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 Bito? Bito? Yeah, something like Bito? that. No, I don't, I don't recall. But he had, this, he had this girlfriend that I don't think he was overly proud of, and I, I'm not going to make a judgment about her, but I don't know what's worse, the fact that he wanted her to climb in through the window. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? You know, when, when, she, when she came oh, over. Oh, out the window, that's usual. No, and the fact that she was willing to do it even before he asked. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's absolutely She's true. So I don't know which one's worse, <laughs> but... It's a true story. Yes. It is true. Well, I hear we don't. Would, do I, would I lie? Is this thing on? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think Fred took a tape out <laughs> right after the mask. <laughs> we don't bring it here just to hear these garbagey stories. We actually want to play a full number yeah, for it. So. Thank you so much for coming, Butchie, everybody. Thank you from the Good Life. I have to try walk with us. Okay. Their new, their new cassette, everybody, is called. What, what is it called? Music for Losers. And it'll be released on CD sometimes in the next, next dimension. Everybody, let's give it up for The Good Life. Yeah. 